today we're going to be looking at the kind of the standard deposit process and publication uh, life cycle and some of the tools that users and administrators can use to manage the contents of the repository. So let's start by logging in as an administrator. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly create two user accounts, one as an editor and one as a user. And the user I'm going to call user. Create, and we're going to create him as type user. And his email address will be user at user.org. A user. And, and, oh, I didn't set a password. Set his password here to user. And then I'm going to create an editor. Called editor. Create him as an editor. And then I'm going to log out. I'm going to log back in as the user. So this is what a, a typical ePrints user will see when they log into a default repository. And what we'll do is we'll create a new item. Now this is going to be a conference or workshop item. The first thing we have is an upload screen. So I have a document here on my desktop. This is a presentation I gave at OR 2015 uh, on um, community development. Abstract. was a talk, it wasn't a keynote, it wasn't a paper, I guess it was just, I will leave it as other. I gave this presentation with Thomas Neugebauer. I can't remember his email address. This email field, by the way, is a unique ID. Um, it's not actually treated as an email address, um, but emails are unique enough that they, they're a kind of a, a de facto email address, that, uh, sorry, a de facto unique ID that, that can be used to identify specific authors. There may be other A fields. There may be other team Neugebauers. So anything with a star is required. So it is, it is was not refereed. Yeah, it is published. No, it's unpublished. And it came out in 2015. And it was in, was it May? It was in June. Event title from repositories was a conference. It was in and it was and that's the details. Um, it is requiring so, but so this is this is a configurable stage, configurable stage of the workflow. 
uh, or rather all stages are configurable, but by default a subject is required um, and when you set up your own repository you can decide which subject taxonomy if any you want and whether it is required. Now this is I guess technology I mean it's repositories, I don't know where repository sits in here, I guess it's library science really um, I don't know where that sits ah, right at the bottom electronic information resource perhaps that's what a repository is I guess and then we get come up to this with it now we can deposit now because we filled in all of the required fields if we go back and unset something so let's cut the title from here and jump back to the deposit stage it says we haven't filled in the required title field so let's jump back to there and let's paste that back in jump back to the deposit and we deposit the item now now this doesn't go live We've got the item has been deposited, uh, but it says your item will not appear in the public website until it's been checked by an editor. Now if we go back to manage deposits, we can see that our community development is in our list of the items we have created and the item status is under review. Now if we look at the tools we have for this, in the, in the, in the actions, you can see that we can pull this back to our work area so that if we have made uh, any mistakes we can then edit it again so let's do that now and back in manage deposits you see we now have this edit icon um, and we have this deposit icon we'll deposit it and see that now in manage deposits we only have this view icon so when we view it if we decide we do want to make changes to it we have to pull it back again so that's our process as a, a, a depositor so let's look as an editor. I think I forgot to set the editor password. Great. So we're now logged into the editor. Now, the, the key tool that an editor has is this review tool here. Now, we have, um, if, we, if we look at our profile, firstly, as an editor, um, and we edit our profile, we can say, see this is editorial alerts. So we can get emails once a week or once a month showing which items are in the review buffer, if there are any items that can remind us to go and, and edit them. Um, and you can see under review we have a single item that's currently in the review buffer waiting to be checked by an editor before it goes live. And the first port of call is this kind of details tab and this shows everything that's set on an item, all of the metadata. So we can see we've got this document we can see we have these metadata fields set and these are organized and uh, are, are in the order in which they appear in the workflow. So uh, our editorial process would be perhaps as a checklist we have to go through, perhaps we have to verify that this document um, is what it says it is. We can open it up, inspect it, we can check that people's IDs are set correctly um, and if this meets with approval, if, 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 we, if, if, if our kind of institutional standard for this going live has been met, we can then approve this, we can move it to the repository. We can also return it to the user or we can just remove it. But let's say that this meets our expectation, um, we can move it to the repository. So when an item starts, it starts in a user's work area, it progresses to the editorial buffer, and then from the editorial buffer, it then goes live. And then at that point, it has a URL. 
and we can see on the site that this thing now exists. Now, those three states aren't the only three states. We also have uh, the ability to remove an item. Now, once something's gone live, it's not really a good idea to destroy it completely. What we have is this retire button that we can click on. So if we decide that we no longer want this to be available, we can retire it. It's now been retired. We still have the details. We still have all the data available. Um, but if we go to the URL of the item, if we go back a couple of spaces, it says this item has been removed. So ePrints creates this kind of tombstone page for the item. And these four states an item can be in, the user work area, the editorial buffer, the live archive, and kind of the, the retired area, these are the four states that an ePrints can be in within the repository. And you know, this can be developed against, there can be multiple ones. Some people have a kind of a, a, a dark area to their archive, which is a fifth state something can be in that has other properties. But by default, um, this is how ePrints treats its publication records.